We've got a wide variety of show and tell today from canes to cake cutting sets. A couple of our bigger buoys. Some thin knives from John Miller. Beautiful scroll work if I can get in there on it. The unnamed knife by Lynn Ray with that 16 pieces altogether, handle and Damascus blade. And a good show and tell book from John on the great knives, the early makers. Keith working hard. And then while Lana's getting some good drawing down, let me show you. Scan all our guys sneaking out because the camera's running. <laughs> They're all scary. Uh huh, uh huh. As Casey was saying, welcome to the blacksmith shop. Uh, we got a lot of folks here today. We got some guests. We got. Uh, a lot of things you need to see as far as show and tell is concerned. And we want to show you a project we're working on, but first, if Casey, you want to show them what we got on the benches, or have you already done that? I just did that. We oh, just I scanned, was, and I was talking about each other while you were drawing. I was occupied. So, uh, you see it's kind of a busy, busy morning for us, but uh, Casey and I are on a little project, and there's the... Uh, there's the spit. Uh, I'm gonna call that the spit. It's the horizontal piece that goes across that uh, S hook and a cooking pot, like a Dutch oven or a coffee pot or what have you, will hang over the fire. <clears throat> so this was a, a simple part. The rest of it's gonna have some joinery to it, but the reason why this is good for us to have it establishes the length and dimension of the other part because we know that this needs to sit and uh, two little forks, about like so. And uh, we want enough space to put a pot in between the legs that go down to the heart, fireplace heart. And Casey has measured the heart, and the total width is 54, which we, we only need just this much. So that's irrelevant, it'll fit in. We just want to check and make sure it would fit into the fireplace as well. Mm -hmm. What we're going to worry about now is the depth, which is 21 inches, and the width is 47. Height. Uh, the height is 47, pardon me. That's the width. The heart comes up 47 inches. So as long as we're not too high or too deep, then we're going to be setting okay over the fire. So our goal is, is to is to fit in within the fireplace that's good enough to a pot or oven or whatever you might be hanging from this device will be over the coals in the fire. Uh, so what I've done is, and I don't know if you can see this, this is kind of, we can move up. this is just a side view of what I have uh, in, envisioned, but nice. we're going to have two of these sections and there will be a There will be another one over beyond that's within the length of that uh, spit. The spit, uh, actually I've got this, no I've got it turned right, that's right. Mm -hmm. Do I have it turned right? No. This will be the back. Go that's, towards the, that's the back. Back this of the hearth. The front, so that means this, this needs to go like this. Right? Right. Because the other thing, when this pot hangs, it's going to have possibly even liquid or cobbler or non-fully cooked ingredients, so it might swing. We need it to... Yeah. So to the clearance needs to go all the way to the heart. Uh-huh. So the heart being about where, here. Where the flame is. Yeah, and the flame will be within this... We're going to create a, a, a framework. If you look down on it, there'll be a framework here going across and one going back. Um, and then the fire is, is like right here. Mm -hmm. uh, in the pot, but what we've got to do is be able to shift it back so that 
uh, in that 21 inches, it's not so overpowering that it won't go in. It won't be too, too big this way. So we're working on those dimensions and how we're going to make the joinery. This will probably be a tenon joint going through and then a head domed on that side. In a similar way here and possibly here. We may just upset that into a turn uh, leg. Mm -hmm. Watch that. It should be My, fairly easy with yeah, the forge. But one thing I, I want to emphasize is that this can be relatively light weight, but we want this to be relatively heavy because it's we don't want it to get forward heavy. We don't want it to fall this we, way. We don't want it to tip out into the floor. It can't fall backwards, but we want it to be heavy enough back here that it provides stability so that if the, something with liquid in it that's quite heavy. If it swings a little bit, it's not going to. Yeah, if it swings, it will pull it all over the floor. floor. Yeah. So these are the kind of things that we're having to consider when we're trying to actually design something. Plus, on top of all this, we need to, as much as we can, we need to see if we can find some kind of documentation for such a device. Now we have cranes and we have one over our uh, forge so we can heat a pot of coffee or something. It swings back and forth and, and uh, we can move it out of the way which we have right now. Or if we're just taking a break and we want to heat up some water for coffee, we can swing it away from the wall and it comes right over the fire. It just sits there and warms up the pot. So essentially we're making a stationary piece not a crane, but a stationary piece that sits in the fireplace that doesn't interfere with building a fire. We can remove the spit and have full clearance uh, if necessary. So we want it to be versatile and functional and, and we don't want to yeah. omit or, or, uh, or forget about the stability. We want it to be safe. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what we have to deal with, and we, we want, also want it to look nice, too. So um, essentially what we're making is a decorative set of andirons for the fireplace that has more function than just andirons. So this is photocopy from a book in our research library, andirons, when he's talking about something like this with the able to hang the spit in between those hooks. We're doing our own set. It's not going to raise and lower. It's just going to be one thing. Uh, and for, that's, that's a good start for us to try, try to work our design off of. I really think that's good. From the same history of Dutch oven cooking, over a standard fire with sticks you can mount on the ground is very, very common and very historically accurate. What we're uh, adapting and, and researching right now is how to get one that stays in the fireplace, stays in the hearth instead of being mounted in like a crane. Yeah, uh, whereas you have to uh, drill into the brick and uh, install anchors. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, we're real reluctant to, to make uh, any permanent changes to a historic structure or house. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we can do it uh, just where it just sits in there, that would be probably better. In case anybody's wondering what a crane, why don't you show them what we have back here? Okay. It's, uh, if you're, we keep saying crane, see how it's mounted into the wall. We're making one that will just sit on the floor, similar to andirons. Okay, it'll swing, and, and we can move all that out and put it right over the hook. And it's just and, and using a system of S hooks or a chain with an S hook or a trammel hook like that one, we can lower it right down to the heat. And we and with this fire, this type of fire, we don't want it to be uh, direct contact with it like you would with a with a wood fire. With ashes. This is a coal fire, and for a number of reasons, we don't want our food or drink just directly into the coal and the smoke of the coal. The heat is sufficient, and it's off to the side just a tiny fraction. A little more grit than we're wanting. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't like the, the coal smoke flavored coffee. <laughs> but the, that's what we're doing. That, this is what we're doing today, and we've got a pretty excited bunch. We've got some stuff that I'm excited to see here in the shop. Right now, the books and letters, uh, correspondence, mm -hmm. it's just an amazing thing what we, we get to see and experience here in our blacksmith shop. All because we are all willing to come together. I mean, scan that, scan that out there. Uh-huh, all the guys. 
in spite of in spite of uh, what you might think, they're discussing a historic uh, something historic. They've got some documentation. Uh, Tim has, and look at the intensity that that they're talking. And this is just a they just walked out to give us some room. <laughs> but that's the excitement that this uh, mm -hmm. this shop and what we've got built here in, in uh, downtown Little Rock at the museum. Every Tuesday. Yeah, it's just great. I'll give a quick shout out to Ryland's Lord. He and I talked a, a, a couple of weeks ago for about an hour about a knife that was a friend of his. It used to be in our collection, and this was his correspondence. I just got this letter. So I haven't read through it, Rylance, but thank you so much. I'm tracking down that knife that you knew was in our collection. We believe it was part of a 2013 display, and it's since gone back to its owner. But I'll have more information for you later. You want to tell them about this knife? Uh, this this is a knife I just finished this week. It, uh, it I had a known design and a drawing to have to work with. So uh, and but the reason why it's not fleshed out in three dimensional so much is because I had enough latitude given me to where I could use my own taste and my own design. But I got the profile mm -hmm. given to me. So this is a Damascus blade, uh, fossilized walrus tusk, and titanium accents on black iron fittings. And it totally has a flavor of the blacksmith, and that's what I was trying to go for. So I even left in my Damascus blade uh, the forge finish down both mm -hmm. sides for a little ways. Anyway, that's what I brought. We're going to carry on, and we appreciate you stopping in and watching and joining with us a little bit, and you see what we're up to. So for the Historic Arkansas Museum, I'm Lynn Ray with Casey Marshall. Mm -hmm. The rest of our group, we're so glad to have you.